Guys, welcome to a new video. I'm actually an Embraer 195 pilot in real life, not for this airline, but this aircraft in Europe here. Last video, we discussed an engine failure on a, on a multi-engine piston aircraft, the DA-62. If you want to see that, hop onto my channel. It's on here. And in this video, we're going to talk about the engine failure on a uh, jet aircraft like this one. Now, we're full ready here. Everything is set up, so we're just ready to go have a normal takeoff um, here in uh, Claire St. Catherine Airport in Cali. And we're just going to talk about the engine failure real quick before it actually happens or brief it. Um, as I said in the last video, those aircraft, these are really made to handle engine failures like a pro without any problem. So these are really, these have enough power, power reserves to have an engine failure at any stage of the takeoff roll, be it below B1 or at V1 or even after V1, V1 is our takeoff decision speed. If there is interest in you guys of me doing a video about those speeds, about takeoff performance calculation, about all of that, please comment so below, I will do so. But today, it's more about how to fly an engine failure. But that said, at any point in takeoff roll, if an engine failure happens, we are trained to deal with it. And there is a critical speed called the V1 or takeoff decision speed. And it's in this aircraft, it's Currently, with our current weight, it's 144. Um, so that, at that speed, we cannot actually um, recheck the takeoff anymore. We have to go. So there's a go speed. At VRV, you're going to rotate the aircraft, and V2 is going to be a safe climb out speed. And then VFS is the uh, speed at which we add uh, flaps zero speed. Of, um, what is it called? Flap safe? Speed of flap flap zero speed, okay, whatever. And um, fl flaps one takeoff, takeoff thrust is set. And also, Embraer is very, very um, different to other aircraft, what the takeoff power setting concerns. We're gonna talk about that in a different video when talking about the EPERF performance calculation, what I'm gonna do with you, maybe soon, actually. So, uh, which is gonna fly the takeoff and uh, the engine will fail at exactly VR. So we have the um, condition here. There it is. It's going to be a flame out at 145 indicated knots. And then what we're going to do is, at first we will do nothing. The pilots, the first pilots who will see the um, the uh, the engine failure will, will say check thrust. The pilots monitoring will, will then check if there's actually takeoff reserve here. If not, the pilot monitoring will will set the thrust lever to max, and then he says thrust check. Then we say rotate because of VR. Just from here is probably until 400 feet a completely normal takeoff. Rotate, positive rate, gear up, and then at 200 feet it's gonna L enough. At 400 feet I will say select heading, heading, select bank, bank, because I want to have a bank limitation of 15 degrees during uh, our initial climb out speed. And then we're gonna do our um, navigate and of course fly the aircraft at first. So the first 400 feet are only to fly the aircraft. And actually the first time I saw an engine failure on a simulator, it was an A320. I did, I was like, what is happening? Nothing is happening actually. The, those guys are actually chilled as can be. And that's what fascinated me so much about an engine failure. We're gonna do that. Let's see how it works with these um, aircraft Embraer uh, actually. I love how it looks. It looks beautiful here in the evening light in 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 in, in, in Calvi. It looks beautiful. We're just gonna see how an engine failure on this aircraft will play out. Our um, engine fail climber procedure or our engine fail um, SID will be just straight ahead, 10 miles from the airport, then right um, into the um, receive nav aid, and this will be a holding a nav aid. Usually I would plot the route on here onto my navigation display. Unfortunately, in this case, on the simulator, it's not possible as we do not have enough and fixed page. So uh, enough said, let's try and fly one. Actually, what's still missing is our QNH. So it was 017. Oh, okay. That's set on both sides, of course. There we go, that's good, that's very good. <laughs> Let's go and uh, take off, shall we? Ready, ready. We'll just do a normal um, takeoff and I will do our normal um, SOPs as we would do in real life as well. T 
take off. Check trust. Trust checked. Okay, I have to f move the thrust lever completely forward then. It doesn't do the in one and one jiggle, that's good. 80 knots checked. I, th I feel like in real life it would accelerate a little bit faster, but it's okay. Let's see how the engine failure does. V1, rotate. Engine 1 fail. Check thrust. Thrust checked. Positive rate. Gear up. Wow, actually, that aircraft handles pretty well. That simulator had handles pretty well during an engine failure. So let's go to pause for a second. Let's see what actually happened. All we did was we um, put the gear up and uh, did a normal takeoff. Um, Elnaf has not yet engaged the lateral navigation mode and we are actually still in our departure. And at the engine, at the ICAS, we see that actually takeoff thrust will be 83.5, but reserve thrust has activated as 100%. In real life, it will be something more like 92, 93%. Um, and reserve thrust would then mean takeoff one if we have takeoff two selected. In case we have takeoff three selected, it would mean takeoff two. But actually, that should say RSV, Romeo Sierra Victor. But this is too specific. We have um, reserve thrust selected, which is pretty, pretty good. Um, so we can assume that the pilot monitoring put the thrust lever forward because there was no reserve thrust. Also, we're going to do a... going to try to yaw the aircraft into a certain direction because otherwise this will be this will be uh, almost impossible to fly so let's continue on try to yaw the aircraft oh come on this is very 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 almost impossible to fly I'm gonna full full right rudder on sake of you want to have full right water rudder Okay, so we're doing almost fine, let's say. So now I say, uh, we've got 1,000 feet already, I say. Should be a little bit early, actually. I'm gonna select heading, and bank. Heading, bank, engage autopilot. Autopilot. Roll FPA, why, did, why it is doing that at the moment, I don't know. Let's select flight level change. Heading, flight level change. Minimal speed. VF speed VFS. Actually, we're doing quite okay. Not too bad. It was a little bit of a difficulty with the control modes. Now, I should not uh, have to put in any more yaw than that so I'm full at the full right yaw with uh, and I still would have to put in some rudder pedals this is not what would happen in real life in real life if you would be in, this is takeoff position for the engine fail this right here this is uh, climb out and this is descent right in the middle actually but actually that aircraft handles pretty pretty well during an engine failure so Climb sequence. Flaps. Flaps zero. Continuous thrust. Now it actually should go down again. Is the auto throttle not engaged? It is engaged actually but whatever, continuous thrust. Uh, and then we can do the um, t 
the um, emergency checklist, whatever the emergency checklist, checklist is. So we have, so now we would analyze what has happened. So we're just gonna no, do no navigation at this point, just gonna go straight ahead 4,000 feet. We're pretty much safe as we are over the sea anyways. So I, s I told you to go to the receive. Let's say if we can do a holding, but I don't think we can. Let's see. Ray, what is it called? Ray receive. Why is it direct not working? Red receive, go on top. Not in database, whatever. Which is gonna go and fly straight ahead until we are in Italy. So, what we do now? We have um, let's select the safe speed, easy easy to ten or something. We now do an analyzation of the problem. We now did the um, climb out. It was a little bit uh, weird to fly with that joystick, obviously. Um, I'm used to having a yoke in front of me, not something like this. But um, we did it almost almost perfect um, now we are straight and level and we are easy going um, once we've reached VFS at a speed uh, at which we can retract the flaps and um, we have flaps here we can set continuous thrust because we are only allowed to fly 10 minutes at max power with one engine inoperative okay so next step is to analyze the act analyze the failure we have a N1 is still rotating we can also look at the outside, probably see a rotation on the propeller, I would say. No, on the fan. So let's see. The right one is actually going almost at max power, and the left one is still rotating a bit. So that's cool. We have that. We can uh, yaw a little bit to the left at this point. What's funny is that that switch actually in real life always stays in the middle. It doesn't move doesn't move like that, all right, but that's just, that's just some non-important stuff. So M1 is still rotating, that means we don't have a severe damage, a severe fire or a separation. That means we, sh we will not apply the N1 fire separation as we damage memory atoms, but we will go to the checklist and now work the checklist. The checklist says um, if a restart is, um, you think it's possible, then you can do a restart, but we do not think it's possible. So we'll secure the engine. I'm gonna pull the throttle. Throttle. Engage auto throttle again. Thrust lever one to idle. And engine one starts up selected to stop. This is securing very hard at the moment. And we'll also start the APU as we need a secondary source of AC. In any case, anything happens. Um, so this is really what we're doing at this point. So let's see, start the APU quick, and now we would do a normal single engine approach and landing back at Claire St. St. Catherine Airport. But I was actually, I have to say, I do not like this add on at all. At all, I wouldn't say. I like what X Craft is doing generally, that they're simulating an aircraft like this. I love that. But I have to say, come on. But I have to say that during the single engine. Uh, takeoff, the aircraft actually flew very good, very well. Uh, it was almost like I uh, imagined it to, to do in real life, so that's cool. Reverse, shouldn't do a reverse here. Come on, shouldn't do that. Throttle, throttle. Let's go auto throttle again. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty cool. That's really cool, I think. Auto throttle, come on, engage. Yeah, there, there you go. And then it's kicking into reverse. Are you serious? No. So it's just landing back. It's a clear. That will be the, the, the handling of the failure. Also, what we would do, of course, after we read the checklists, we would do the after takeoff checklist. After the after takeoff checklist, we would alert the cabin crew and make first we would do a four deck. A four deck is something you would do if you have a kind of a situation on board and you want to have the and you want to select the best option um, this, and for the safest outcome. So you'll go facts, we have an engine failure option. We could go continue to a bigger airport, but actually here is fine. We have a runway length available and the weather is good as well. Risks we could continue overseas without only one engine. Maybe it's a, it's a risk because the other engine could fail as well. We don't know why the engine 
it failed in the first place. So you would do a decision options and then you would call the cabin crew, tell them what you're going to do, make a PA and then you're going to land at whatever airport you chose to land at. So that's what we all did. We're going to land here and everything is fine. So that is how an engine failure is flown, guys, on the Embraer 195. Again, it's not it's so easy to show with this aircraft um, as you have to do uh, quite a lot of stuff at the same time, like filling it around with the MCP panel, with the FMA, and also with the yaw, um, with the yaw trim, so it's not so easy. But I think we did, we did a pretty okay job, actually. And I hope you find it interesting, and also to see a comparison on what an engine failure looks like in, on a DA62, and what an engine failure looks like here on the Embraer 195, and I'm pretty sure it looks almost the same on any other jet aircraft out there. So. Guys, I hope you find found it interesting. Um, also, what's something to consider actually is the landing weight. So, what's our weight at the moment? Forty-seven tons. So, what we will probably would be doing is just circle around here, or maybe maybe go to a different airport because we are way above max landing weight. Uh, max landing weight is forty-five tons. If we would have an engine fire, we would probably disregard that and just land anyways. But if we have time and it's not a time critical situation and an engine failure generally speaking it's engine flame but it's not time critical at all um we would probably circle around a bit um to make to to, to make the aircraft lighter but for now that's it really i i hope you like the video and i uh, see you in the next one Bye bye